Hi friends, Grace here. I hope you're well and you are having a lovely day. Now I'm sure many of you already saw this coming, but here now I'd like to make it official and that is I am now removing my membership from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In other words, I no longer want to identify with that denomination and my reasons are strictly doctrinal. In other words, I no longer believe some of the core doctrines that the church advocates. Now, I want to make it clear that I do believe that the church did initially start in God's will. God did raise that church up for the sole purpose of restoring the Sabbath truth, the truth about his creation as well. However, sadly, the church has refused to walk on with the advancing light and the result can only be darkness and confusion. And that's pretty apparent today. That's what we're seeing happening today. Darkness and confusion. And some of the confusion I was trying to highlight in a couple of my previous videos. Now, the main doctrinal issue that I have is the idea that the Sabbath always falls on a Saturday that the Sabbath is a continuous weekly cycle uninterrupted that falls on a Saturday. And we say this and we believe this not because the Bible actually tells us this, but because we say Ellen White says it's a continuous cycle that falls on the Saturday. And we do this because the Jews also keep the Saturday Sabbath, Saturday Sabbath. And our argument is that we can't imagine ever the Jews giving up the Sabbath because they steeped in tradition. So that must be the Sabbath. So I hope you understand that those reasonings, they're not biblical. And I want to prove this in this video, in this presentation. So if there's any presentation that I want you all to pay attention to, out of all my presentations and videos, it's this one here because it affects everyone here. So please listen carefully. I want to make sure my reasoning is clear because I know there's a lot of strange rumours flying around. So I want to set the record straight as to the reason why I am leaving the church. Now, I'd like to begin my presentation with Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 14. And it tells us, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So we see that it's Satan's desire to be like God. And interestingly enough, he says that he desires to sit upon the mount of the congregation. And if you look at that Hebrew word, mount of the congregation, it means moed. And it's also translated time appointed. The appointed place, the appointed time. It's also sometimes translated as just time or season. Or days. So it's telling us how Satan basically just wants to control worship. He wants to control times, seasons, the festivals, and so on. And by doing this, he becomes like the Most High. He receives worship. Now, in Leviticus 23, it provides us a list of some of these appointed times, these Moads that Lucifer wants to sit upon. In Leviticus chapter 23, beginning at verse 1, we are told, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying unto them, Concerning the feasts, it's that same word that we saw in Isaiah, the Moads, concerning the feasts, the Moads of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. So these Moads are also holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. 
It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So note that the seventh day Sabbath weekly cycle also comes under these moeds, these times. And the Bible describes the Sabbath also as an holy convocation. So to quickly summarise what we've seen so far, Satan wants to sit upon the appointed times, the Moads. He wants to govern times. He wants to govern seasons. He wants to be in control because by doing this, he's like the Most High. And these appointed times, they can also be called holy convocations. We saw that in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 2. We saw the Sabbath also is a holy convocation. Very important. Now the next question we need to ask is, what sign did God give us or tell us that would commence these appointed times for worship? What are the signs he's given us? Well, if we turn to Genesis chapter 1 verse 14, we are told, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons. That word seasons is the same word that we've been speaking about earlier. The moeds, the appointed times and for days and years. So we see clearly that it's the lights in the firmament. These are the signs that God has given us that will designate the times for these seasons and for these appointed times. It's the lights in the firmament. And more specifically, in Psalms 104 verse 19, we are told, He appointed the moon for seasons. Again, same words. This is how we are to study the Bible. Precept upon precept, line upon line. We let the Bible explain itself. And it does this perfectly, you'll find. The Lord clearly tells us, He appointed the moon for seasons. The moon for seasons, for the moeds, for the appointed times. The sun knows he's going down. So it's the moon that's designed to do this. So again, to summarise, we have seen that Satan wants to sit upon the appointed times, the moeds. He wants to govern worship. These appointed times are also called the Holy Convocations. We saw the Sabbath also counts as a part of this Holy Convocation, the seven-day weekly Sabbath. And we are told specifically that it's the moon that God designed to mark these appointed times. Now, the question we need to ask ourselves is, was there ever a time when ancient Israel was keeping the Sabbaths based upon the moon cycle, as God clearly told them in his word. Yes, historical records confirm this. In the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, Holidays, page 410, we are told, The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was dependent upon the lunar cycle. Interesting. Originally, The new moon was celebrated in the same way as the Sabbath. Gradually it became less important, while the Sabbath became more and more a day of religion and humanity. So this is in the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia. They are telling you that in ancient times, as God designed it, The Sabbath was also, not just the other yearly feasts, but also the weekly Sabbath was dependent upon the moon cycle. Another statement. The new moon and the new year by the arrival of spring was declared by the Sanhedrin. It was in the time of Hillel II, 4th century AD, that the Romans prohibited this practice. Hilliard II was therefore forced to institute his fixed calendar. The present Jewish calendar became fixed. In other words, it was non-lunar. It was no longer dependent on the signs in the heavens. And this happened in the 4th century, Rabbi Louis Lincolnstein. And I advise you in your own time to research Hilliard II. And you can find this, going even in Wikipedia, Britannica, the encyclopedias, 
research him and they will tell you it was under him. Because of severe persecution under Constantine's son, they decided to make their calendar fixed. So it was no longer dependent on the lights in the sky. And you can find some of this information in the history box. Severe persecution, because back then they waited for the Sanhedrin to announce the new moon, when that new month would begin. But when they were under persecution, everything was confused. What happened? They decided to make it fixed. So it's pretty clear that this happened in the past. And this is why it's also dangerous to build your faith on assumptions. Because oftentimes people say, the Jewish keep Saturday, it must be the true Sabbath. It's an assumption. We don't go by assumptions. And we need to remember that the Jewish nation today is an apostate nation. God said to them, your house is left unto you desolate. So why are we even going to them to find important truths when they even rejected the Messiah? Darkness, confusion is there. You can't base your faith because they are doing something. You base it on the word and the word is telling us clearly without a doubt that the Sabbath was based on the signs in the sky. And this will become so clear as we continue in the presentation. If we turn to Exodus chapter 31 verse 13, here we're going to talk about how the Bible constantly tells us that the Sabbath is a sign. Exodus chapter 31 verse 13 we are told, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Again, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12. Moreover also, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctifies them. Ezekiel 20, verse 20. And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. So the Sabbath is supposed to be a sign between him and his people. It's a sign that we worship him. It's supposed to be a sign that makes us distinct and unique. If they're worshipping the same way the heathens are worshipping, or we're basing our worship styles on the heathens, and I call the Jews heathens, because that's what they are now, then you're going to be lost. It doesn't make it a special sign. It's a special sign that God has revealed to him and his people. It's that same sign he gave them when he called them out of Egypt and he gave them this new calendar and he told them to look at the lights. This is your calendar. This is your sign. It's not Rome. It's the lights in heaven. So the Sabbath is a sign. Check out that Hebrew word for sign. It's Orch. Orch. And now I'm butchering the pronunciations. Apologies. But it pretty much means sign. It's a distinguishing mark. It's a banner. It's a remembrance. Remembrance. It's a miraculous sign. This will become clear. It's a miraculous sign this Sabbath. It's an omen. It's a warning. And if we turn to Genesis chapter 1 verse 14, again we are told, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for what? Signs, it's the same word, it's the lights in heaven that govern the worship times. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So we see it's the lights in heaven. These are the signs that govern our worship. But sadly, a lot of that knowledge has been lost and it's the work of the third angel to restore this important truth to God's people. And when he does that, then the foundations are restored. If we turn to Numbers chapter 10 verse 10, here we're going to look at what this new moon is and how it works. Because this is something I had to learn. Because when I was being told this, it was all confusing. Because I never understood the lights in the sky. But now I'm starting to understand them. And they're making perfect sense. In God's world, his order, there's perfection. But if you're following man, 
man's calendar, you're going to be lost. And that's why we have this issue in Samoa. They are completely lost and confused. And no one understands the gravity of that situation. And the reason why they're in that situation is because they have forgotten the Bible, the word of God. And they're basing their reasoning on man's logic. And that's why the church will continue to be confused until it wakes up and embraces this increase in life that God is giving to his people right now. In Numbers chapter 10 verse 10, here it's going to talk about the new moon. It's a day of celebration. Numbers chapter 10 verse 10 it tells us, And in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginning of your months, or in other words, beginning of your mood, month, month means moons, Ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifice of your beginnings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am the Lord your God. So God is telling us that in the beginning of the months, in the beginning of the new moon, it will become clear as I continue, that is a day of worship and it's a day of celebration, the beginning of the month, the new moon. In Psalms 81 verse 3, we are told, blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. So the psalm is telling us to blow up the trumpet in the time of the new moon and in the time appointed. And if you check out the Hebrew word for the time appointed, it's basically talking about the full moon. I'll talk about that as we continue in the presentation, if you're not familiar with the moon cycle, but you have the new moon, and then 14 days later, you have the full moon when it's bright and circling. This was a time period as well. When Jesus died, it was on the full moon. Full moon. It's quite interesting. But it's telling us to blow the trumpet. That's the call for worship. We do it at the new moon and in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23, we are told, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So they are separate days. It's important to understand that. And we know the new moon is still re relevant because the Lord is telling us, even in this prophecy, Isaiah chapter 66 verse 23, that it's going to come to pass that from one new month, new moon, new month is the same thing, and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship him. Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 1, it tells us, Thus saith the Lord God, The gate of the inner core that looketh towards the east shall be shut, the six working days. But on the Sabbath it shall be opened, and in the day of the new moon it shall be opened. So note it's talking about three distinct days and they separate. You have your working days, you have your Sabbath, and you have your new moon. So we see the similar principle of the Sabbath. Six days you work, but when it comes to the new moon, you stop. It's the celebration. When it comes to the Sabbath, you stop. It's a celebration. First Samuel chapter 20 verse 5. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon. This is telling us that they knew the cycle of heaven. They knew when the new moon was going to begin. Now there are some, and maybe this did happen in, in the past, where they said that they had to wait to see the crescent, you know, and then they would announce the new moon. But this is indicating to me that they knew the cycle. Just like today, we know the cycle because the moon follows a set cycle. I'll talk about that in a moment. I believe they knew that as well. So with the calculations, the moon does its course within 29 and a half uh, days. And because it's a set course, it doesn't divert. You can always pinpoint where the moon is going to be because it works in that sequence. So they knew this sequence as well. That's why David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon. So you can accurate predict the moon cycle. Now, what is the new moon cycle? What is this cycle am I talking about? What is the difference between new moon and full moon and crescent moon? Because at that time, I, I never knew. When this was being shown to me, I had no idea what that was. 
but it just shows to us how far we are from God's creation. We are to look to her heavens. The Apostle Paul tells us the heavens, the lights and the firmament, they're speaking to us. Their calls for worship, and we need to start understanding how how this works because it's intimately connected with worship. So, if you look at this image here, it's briefly like summarizing the cycle of the moon. So, here where it's black, this is when you can't see the moon. This is when it's a new moon. So, this is like the beginning of the month, the new moon where it's black, and then within the twenty eight. 29 and a half days, it gets bigger and then it gets smaller again. So after the new moon, this is what I think is so amazing. I find this so amazing. So after the new moon, when it's black, it starts to get better, bigger. They call this the waxing crescent. And then within seven days, approximately seven days, it reaches his third quarter here. So it's half full. So that's seven days, like after the new moon. And then after another seven days, so uh, you have the full moon. So that's basically like the 15th day, 14th day after um, the new moon. It's full, it's bright, it's shining. That's why when we say Christ died on the 14th day of Nisan, of Passover, 14th day from the moon, you know he died when it was a full moon. So 14 days later, it's a full moon. Then another seven days later, it starts to wax again. They call this the waxing gibbous. So it goes down again to its first quarter, that's after seven days. And then after another seven days, it starts to wax small until it's small again. And then it disappears, becomes black, and then that starts off the cycle again. And it does that within 29 and a half days. And that's basically how the cycle works. So if we look at this image here, we can see how it fits with the Sabbaths and the new moon and the working days and how it all ties together. So the first things first is that you have your new moon day, like it's a separate day, it's not a Sabbath, it's the beginning of months, it just announces that. So that is the new moon. Then you have your six days of work and then on the seventh, which is like the eighth from the new moon, you can see that here, you have your Sabbath. So you work your six days, and then you have your Sabbath. And when that Sabbath comes, as I mentioned, that's when it's the third quarter. It's the half moon. And then after you have the Sabbath, you work again another six days. And then you reach the 15th. And then that's the Sabbath. And again, it's a full moon. So it's four now, halfway through the month. So the moon is it's like a calendar, it's a clock. And then after that, six days, you do your six days work, and then you come to your third Sabbath of the month. And that's when the moon is the first quarter, it's like just half. And then after that, you work another six days, and then you have the Sabbath again on the 29th. And as I mentioned, the moon's course is 29 and a half days. So sometimes you have like a translation day. If it's a 30 day month, you have that one day, but it's just like a normal working day. It's not really counted. And then the next day is usually the new moon. And this is where a lot of the confusion lies. Some have always said it's got to be six day work, Sabbath six day work, Sabbath, you know. But the forgetting the Bible tells us, which has been missed, which has been buried, is that you also have the new moon celebration. So you would never ever work more than six days. So yes, for example, if it's a 30 day month, you will have your Sabbath on the 29th, and then it's the end of month, like a preparation, and then you'll have your new moon, and then that's then the cycle restarts again. So you're starting again from one to three. And that means the Sabbath does fall on any day of the Gregorian calendar. So it's not fixed, it's not always on a Saturday. You know, you're going by the moon cycle. So God is dictating the worship times. That was how it worked in the past. And that's what I believe it's God's method of worship because the Saturday Sabbath is just not consistent with the Bible truths. And when you try to follow that or you try to say that's what it was, that's in the beginning, it falls short. And we know it falls short because we know that the Sabbath in the times of the Jewish calendar, in the Jewish times when Christ died, you know, that Sabbath after the Passover, we know that it fell, it would have fell on a Wednesday, according 
to the Jewish calendar, the lunar months, you can trace it down. And this was my biggest issue. This is what I was trying to understand. But now when you understand the moon cycles, it makes perfect sense why it was not on a Saturday. And no one can dispute those dates. Because if you're going to dispute that date in terms of AD 31, the 70 week prophecy, and as I said before, throughout 1844, because 1844 works on the same principle. But I hope you see that God's order is perfect. And with this way of worshipping, there can be no confusion. God put these signs way above man before man can tamper with it. It's the signs in the heavens. That's how they worked back in those days. But sadly enough, we've lost that knowledge. And in the beginning, as I was learning this, I was thinking, like, how can I, um, like, tell the time with the moon? I didn't know. I don't know nothing. I'm still learning, you know. So that was my biggest worry, and I'm sure that's your worry as well, some of you. But it takes time. But you can sort of start to figure it out as you follow the moon. There are also apps as well. So I also have an app as well. So it kind of tells you the size of the moon. Um, the app is called Moon Phase. So it tells you the moon phase. And it's pretty accurate because you can look at the moon, compare it, look at the sky. And it tells you like its cycle, where it is. Another great app I have as well. It's the WLC calendar map, World Last Chance calendar map. And it tells you like the days of the Sabbath, how they fill on the Gregor how they would fall on the Gregorian calendar and how it works here. So you can sort of tell when it would be. And you can switch between the Luni solar calendar. This is a nice view and it sort of tells you like when this like how the Sabbath works and so on. So you can use apps like that that help. So you can use apps such as those that can sort of help you understand how it all works. And I know a lot of it is confusing. I know it's like, how can this be? How can this knowledge be lost? I know some people will be thinking, uh, how can you keep a Sabbath on a different day? How am I going to work? This is so confusing and blah, blah, blah. And the reason why it feels like that in the beginning, I, I thought this as well, is because we've been so under Rome's calendar, the Gregorian calendar. We've looked at that cycle. They've told us how we work Monday to Friday. And then you have your two days off, like Saturday and Sunday. That's basically the calendar they gave us. This is why I would say the Sabbath today, if you're keeping Saturday, Sabbath is not really a test. I mean, Rome is pretty much giving you that day. That's why no one bothers you if you choose not to worship on a Saturday. But if you try and doing it this way, this is where the persecution comes. And this way of worshiping really takes you, I believe, out of Babylon, out of this world. I believe it's the same principle, it's the same work God is doing with us as he did with ancient Israel. Now, one of the prime reasons why God took ancient Israel out of Egypt was so they could freely worship him. Also so they could rest. Exodus, Moses makes that clear. Why? Because they were slaves in Egypt in the world. So they couldn't keep the Sabbath correctly. So Moses was saying to Pharaoh, like God is saying, let my people go so they can come and worship him in the wilderness. Worship him according to the signs that he gave them in heaven. That's what he was teaching them. And it's the same thing he was doing with us. When he was bringing us, trying to bring us out of the churches in 1844, it was so we can worship him. But sadly enough, we haven't walked with this increasing light. We've just stopped, you know, at Saturday and thought, that's it. When the work still continues, you know, because we are still under Rome's calendar. We are still slaves. They have set the calendar and we are following that work cycle. So now, if you want to try and keep the Sabbath according to what God told us in the Bible, then you're really going to see the persecution. You're going to see it's not going to be easy. You're going to see that many people might have to lose their jobs. If you want to keep the Sabbath according to the lights in the sky as God designed. That's a real test, right? The Sabbath is a test. He gave it to ancient Israel and he's given it to us today. The Bible tells us all those that live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Why would not be persecuted? All those that live godly in Christ. If you are a true Christian, you are odd. 
And now, as this truth is coming out, for many now to keep the Sabbath, because it falls on different days, we've been so brainwashed and used to Rome's calendar thinking that's it. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be hard, which is why many people, I believe, reject this message. But through this, it showed to me that we are still in spiritual Egypt. We are still slaves because we can't worship God as we desire to through fear of like losing our jobs and not being able to survive or being persecuted and so on and so on. But God is calling us to come out of it, come out of Babylon regardless, trust him. And he'll give us the strength to do this. But I want you to understand that this is God's cycle. And it's fixed in the heavens. It's clear. He's given us the signs. And that's how we are to worship him. Now, I know some have said God will never hide his Sabbaths. It's so precious to him. Well, I believe the Bible tells us differently. In Hosea chapter 2 verse 11, he tells us, I will also cause her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons and her Sabbaths and all her solemn feasts. So the Bible's telling us at one point, or God could, or he would, cause the Sabbaths to cease, the true Sabbaths. Why? Because it's so precious to him. Remember, the Sabbath is supposed to be a sign between him and his people. It's supposed to be something so unique, so special, so separate from the world. If you are saying Saturn's day, Saturday, which comes from Saturn, from the heathens, is God's day, then that doesn't make it special. Why? Because the Jews also do that as well. And other churches do that. And we know the Jews of today, that's not God's church. They, they, they forgot him. They left him. They rejected him. You know, so it's a sign between him and the true worshippers. The 144,000, it's unique. That's what separates the two. And I believe this is going to be a part of the final message. I believe that so much. Having looking at the issue with Samoa and looking at what's going on, it has to be this. Isaiah 58, verse 12 to 14, we are told, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairers of the breach, the restorers of paths to dwelling. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. Isn't that very interesting? After he talks about the end time church, building up the foundations of generations, the restorers of the preach, bringing them back to God's true creation, God's true way of doing things. It tells us, the second verse, it brings us to the Sabbath. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honourable, and shall honour him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasures, nor speaking thine own words, thou shalt thou delight, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So there's a special blessing when we worship how God desires us to worship, how he told us to worship. We need to go back to the beginning. We really need to go back to our Bibles and try to understand these things because it's so, so important. It's so important to know this. You know, there is going to be increasing, like light is ever increasing. You can't just say, okay, Ellen White and the Pioneers stopped at Saturday and that's it. You know, they had it right, forget it. We just now need to sit down and wait for the Sunday law. Well, friends, you're going to be shocked. I don't think it's going to work out like that. And I believe the Lord is highlighting the issue with Samoa for us to wake up. Because I was hoping, I didn't think anyone could, but no one, can, no one can give a true, right, biblical solution based on Seventh day Adventist doctrines in regards to how to handle that situation with Samoa. You know, in case you've forgotten, what did they do? They completely changed the days. So what was once known as Saturday is now Sunday. 
And that church who believes that Saturday is a seven day cycle, seven day, it's continuous, it's the seven day cycle that um, God worshipped on, so we're not going to change, we're going to stick to it, even though they call it Sunday, this is still our seventh day. And I mean, if God did lay out that principle in the beginning, then they're right to do that, you know. So I understand what they're doing. They're just trying to stick to that seven day cycle. But then that causes an issue because they're worshipping on the same day as the other churches, which the churches, Seven Adventist Church, identifies as Babylon. You're in the same boat. So how can you give the loud cry? How can you say, don't worship the beast in his image? When you are worshipping on the same day as them, the Sunday, you're acknowledging that day. And that day, even though they, you think it's Saturday and they call it Sunday, but that day was arranged and organised, not by God, but by Rome. That calendar, that's how Satan is controlling the worship and times. It's by the calendars. It's not modelled after God's principles. That's why you're going to have issues if you're in the world and you want to keep the Sabbath according to how God designed us to. It's going to be a battle for me. I know this as well. But we're in the world, right? How is this going to work? But I believe where there's a will, there's a way. And if you walk in faith, God will bless you. will give you the blessings. It's a testing message. Saturday Sabbath to me is not a test. Satan has given you that day. You know, he doesn't care. As long as you're not worshipping the true Sabbath based on the signs in the sky. The Bible tells us the heavens declare the glory of God. Day unto day they speak. That's what Paul was telling us. They're speaking to us, telling us of the worship's times. But we've lost that knowledge. And we're following after Rome. And that would lead you to, to get in the mark of the beast if you're not walking with the light. Because there is no separation now between the churches. But you embrace this message here and then you are, <laughs> you're weird, right? You're different, you're unique. But God likes it that way because he doesn't want us to be caught up with the folly that's going on down there. He wants to bring us high to the heavens. The stars in the firmament, they are so important. And the devil knows this. That's why he's taken over astronomy. You notice how the Jesuits are steeped into astronomy. The Freemasons, NASA, you know. It's all done deliberately, you know. And the whole world and the church today has embraced a false cosmology. This is why they can't see this light. This is why people like me sound crazy and strange to them. Because they're in the world. Following after Rome. But in their deluded minds, they think they're separate. You're part of a daughter of Rome. If you're hanging on to any of her doctrines. And God cannot use you effectively to give the loud cry. Come out of her, my people. Come out of Babylon. Come out of system. Satan is controlling how you worship. Believe it or not, he is controlling how you worship. That's why when you share this with people, it's like, no. This can't be true. How can it fall on a Wednesday one month? How can it have a fall on a Tuesday one month? How does that work? It's because you're under Babylon's calendar. That's why it's difficult. Our minds have been moulded that way, but it was never God's way. I mean, we start the new year in January. Happy New Year. That's not God's calendar. Our new year is supposed to start in April. The new season, spring, beginning of life. That makes more sense. It's in harmony with nature. It's when things spring up. It's new. New year. God knows what he's doing. He built the seasons. But we start it in January. It makes no sense whatsoever when you think about it. We really need to wake up. Now I know what's running through most of your minds is what about Ellen White? She says the Sabbath is continuous. If you are saying the Saturday Sabbath is wrong, then that means Ellen White is a false prophet and so on and so on and blah, blah, blah. You know, and how I look at it, right? I don't put the blame on Ellen White. The reason why I don't is because she makes it abundantly clear that we are to base our doctrines on the Bible, not her. She says it herself, she's infallible and she could have made mistakes. Light's increasing, the Sabbath light is increasing. She always said, base your reforms, your understandings on the Bible. She says, That's why I don't like, I don't really, I don't really. 
she doesn't so I know a lot some people you know have because of it they end up hating Ellen White think she's a false prophet and blah 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 I can't speak on that because I don't know the woman I look at her writings like Steps to Christ it's a beautiful book I will give that book out to people because it's beautiful I just see Ellen White as a human I I don't exalt her like oh she's infallible like, I was speaking to one of my friends and he was like, no, he believes Ellen White is infallible. She can't make a mistake and blah, blah, blah. So he's just into Ellen White. I noticed someone left another comment and they said, well, whatever Sabbath Ellen White kept, I'm going to keep. So I know, I see like what a lot of the other denominations were saying about Seven Adventists being a cult to Ellen White. I now see it to be 100% true because that's been my experience. Look at the comments in my last videos. I'm saying, show it to me from the Bible. Ellen White says, prove our doctrine from the Bible. The people can't hear it. It's Ellen White said this. She said it's a consistent week. So it has to be a consistent week. Like everyone has choices, right? If you want to base your faith, your whole religion on what Ellen White said and you believe her to be infallible, that's fine. That's your choice. But that's not me. I'm a Bible believing person, you know, my Bible comes first. When I became an Adventist, I was told that the Bible in Adventism comes first and that um, Ellen White doesn't say nothing contrary to the Bible and blah, blah, blah. But through my, I'd say 15 years experience in Adventism, I see that now to certainly not be the case. Ellen White's writings for most Adventists, especially those who call themselves present truth, comes first above the Bible. So even though I believe I've clearly showed you, or the Bible clearly shows you, that it's the signs in the sky that governs the worship times, including the Sabbath, the Holy Convocation, it's the moon, God clearly tells you that in his word. I know many would say, oh, this is too much, Ellen White's enough, and I want to keep the Saturday. And that's their choice. They're going to have to answer to God in the judgment. And I don't think he will be pleased when he specifically told you and he's told us that we base our doctrines on the Bible. So for me, I don't pay too much attention to what Ellen White said. For me, it's the Bible. Ellen White and the Lord and Jesus, that's between them. At the end of the day, she says it, the Bible says it, it comes first. Now, if Ellen White was going around saying that she came to bring new light that would replace certain Bible doctrines, then I would go hard against her. But because she never said that, she always said that, go to the Bible, make that your first point of doctrine. I can't attack the woman or hate her. I just see her as a human, a fallible human that makes mistakes. I also don't believe God gave her all the light. The light is increasing. God has a special test for every generation. So he has to hide certain things from them and then save it for this generation to see who's genuine, who's going to walk in his laws, who's going to walk in his statutes and stuff like that. So that's how I see it. So everyone needs to make a choice. I know this is going to be the hardest thing for many Adventists, but um, that's your choice. If you want to follow Ellen White and keep Sabbath on Saturday, the same as the apostates, then that's your choice. But, um... 1 Kings 13, you know, is a very peculiar story. And I never understood this story before. I thought God was really harsh and a bit mean in this story. But now in the light of everything that's happening with Ellen White and she being, I believe, given the wrong information or certain things or misunderstanding certain things because she's human. Now seeing that happening, I see this story describing that. Now, if you read 1 Kings 13, I advise you to read it in your own time. But basically, God sent a prophet to one of the kings, I think, to heal, heal him because he was sick. And God told the prophet, the man, not to eat. He goes, don't eat nothing on your way. Don't touch nothing. You go there and come back. So he went to the prophet. He did the work. And then when he was on his way back to his home, I believe another prophet or someone else heard about what he did. So he ran to this other prophet that did that miraculous work of healing the king or something. And he said to him, come and eat. You know, I've prepared something. And the other prophet was like, no, I shouldn't eat. God said I should not eat. I should just go back straight to my home. And the other prophet was like, no, 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 no. Just come. It's fine. God said it's okay. So the guy, the other prophet came to the guy and he just ate with him. 
And the next thing the prophet says to him, you're going to die. The lion is going to eat you on your way home. So as he was going home, the lion came, ate him and killed him. And then the other prophet who sort of like duped him, took him and buried him and wept for him. And I just always thought it was strange. I never understood like, what? This is like, really like, I don't understand this. But I now see it the same thing. God has told us something clearly in the Bible. Bible always comes first. It's the first book. It's the beginning. He has told us how to live. Everything is in the Bible. Now Ellen White's come along and she said certain things, you know, like this continuous Sabbath, right? It being on the Saturday. I believe the scriptures, especially with the crucifixion of Christ and the issue that's going on in Samoa, shows us that that's not the full picture. It's wrong. That's the truth. And you have a choice. You can either follow what Ellen White says, even though she's not there to supersede the Bible, you can base your faith and just stick there and join the daughters of Rome. That's what you're going to end up doing, like the churches of Samoa. Or you can go back to your Bible, go back to the original words of God, go back to Genesis, the five books of Moses, the beginning, and see what God's true order was in all of this. You know, so we have choices. It's a testing message. It's a type of test, you know. But I always say, whatever you decide to do, don't even follow me. Research it. Base it on the word of God. Let me make it clear. There's lots of videos that attack the lunar Sabbath, that say it's wrong, and lots of different ideas, and blah, blah, blah. So you, you might be confused, because that was me. I, I watch, I'll look at arguments for and against. I want to make sure I cover all angles. I understand everything. I've looked at the angles against it, some of the arguments they tried to use. And when you study them, they don't hold no weight. I mean, for example, one of the things that troubled me I was trying to understand was that the moon was created on the fourth day. How can that be the Sabbath of the sign? God never said that in the beginning. That's just so confusing. But ask yourself, what came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken, of course, right? When God created Adam and Eve, did he create Adam and Eve as a baby or as full-grown adults? Full-grown adults. And it's the same thing with the lights in the skies. I believe they were already in their cause. It doesn't matter what God did in the beginning. What we know is that he created them and he told us specifically they are to be for signs, signs of worship. And then if you go through the Bible, when you look at Exodus, when he's bringing this truth back to them, giving them the holy convocations, they are to tie to these signs. You know it's biblical. So I hope you see and understand my reasons and why I can't be a part of this denomination because the key message that it preaches, Saturday being the Sabbath, I don't believe it. I believe it's based on the lunar cycle and I believe that's what the Bible teaches. Now, um, I identify as non-denominational. I'll make that clear. So I don't want to be part of any denomination. I'm just grace that wants to study the Bible and make it to heaven. I don't want to be associated with any denominations. It's rules. Like even with Adventism, I'd say the last four or five years, I was pretty much to be honest, fed up with the church, looking at what it's doing, looking at where it's going, but I didn't just want to leave like that, you know? There was no like crazy doctrine. Even me believing in Bible cosmology, that wasn't enough for me to leave. Even the people were telling me to leave because I don't believe in the globe earth. That wasn't enough, believe it or not. I didn't agree with it, but the doctrine that the church or most Adventists push regarding that, but it wasn't enough for me to leave. It's this here. It's understanding the Sabbath, I think. There's no way I can do this because I'm contributing. I believe this is, it's Babylon. You're still under Rome. Pope Gregory's calendar. I can't do it. My conscience won't let me do it anymore. We are to come out of Babylon, out of Rome. This is like, I don't think people realise that anything that comes from the Antichrist is not good. You know, for example, this whole cosmology the the idea of the earth spinning around the sun floating in space people being upside down unprovable by by science water um curling upside down it being able to rain upside down in australia it's absolute ludicrous you know but we because they've told us this from when we were young we've been programmed this way you need to look at the root when you 
like as a Christian, especially in present truth, I just think it's important to always look at the root, the foundation. Where did it come from? Where did that idea, when you think about it? It came from Rome. It came from Jesuit. That's not from the Bible. The Hebrews had a different cosmology, completely different. The early Protestants were protesting the Jesuits against this cosmology. But because of the programming, the signs and wonders from NASA, we fell into that trap. You know, deception is real. And even with that, I wouldn't have left the church for that. But it's just this here. This here is just not acceptable. You know. So um, that's the end of this video here. I think what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to start a new channel. Because I have so many like crazy weird stalkers on this channel. I don't know, just hateful people that just stalk this channel so I want to just start afresh something new you know it's been an interesting journey in adventure but it's time and I'm happy to move on light is ever increasing and I have to walk on with the light bear in mind I didn't grow up Adventist I was born Catholic at an early age I started looking for the truth I just knew there was a God it led me to Adventism for a few years I learned quite a few things interesting journey but now I'm just not getting anything out of it it's just like now I know why the church is dead I was never happy after a while the first maybe eight years it's fun it's exciting you're learning I'm sure you saw my journey on this YouTube channel I wanted to share everything I was learning but now God has revealed so much more to me and I just have to walk wherever he's leading me now on my next journey um, what makes this quite tough as well is that because the Adventist denomination is worldwide, you can meet people here, like there's no one. <laughs> so you're sort of worshipping on your own, like Sabbath and stuff like that. I mean, there's people I know online, but it's not the same as having a church to go to on the day. So that's going to be a real struggle for me, I think. But I always have to remember that God says there's 7,000 that haven't bowed down. And there are people out there, I know, that are keeping the sabbath as god designed i've met a few like online but no one like close to me that you can fellowship with in person that's important so that's what i'm praying for now i want to have a, a small group that i can like open the lunar sabbath with and the new month and just like start really praying and like studying with people who are genuine that just want bible truth with adventists now i think i just hit a brick wall it's just ellen white says this and and that's that and that's fine if that's what you want to believe if you know we can just agree to disagree if that's what you want to believe like ellen white is like your god and you want to follow her and that's fine do that man but for me that's not the case it's the bible i have to see it in the bible not ellen white if it's not in the bible I'm not interested, you know, it's just like counsel, it can be advice, but it's not a law. It has to be the Bible for me. Anyway, I wish you all the best. Um, there's one more video I think I would share, which talks about the calendar changes. It's a podcast. I'll probably post that in a few days, and then that may possibly be the end of this channel. So I wish you all the best, and God willing, if we are faithful, I would meet some of you all in heaven by his grace. Take care and all the best.